Lots of fans out here, huge fans. I'm a season ticket holder to the Me Houston too. Texans, uh, and so I love my football. But at the end of the day, isn't it important for fans to understand that this is a business? It's incredibly important uh, for our fans to understand that <clears throat> uh, because it's important for our players to. Uh, right now, we're in a lockout situation because the owners have shut down that game and taken it away from our fans and from our players. What, it, what is really holding the two of you back? Right now, to be honest and truthful, uh, the players are working out on their own. Uh, whether it's Texas, uh, New Orleans, Washington, uh, or Green Bay, the players are working out on their own because they love to play football. What are the sticking points in terms of right now? Well, right now we're out of work. Uh, the sticking point is there's a lockout by the owners that is only there because they don't want to bargain on a level playing field. The issues that uh, divided us uh, in the past uh, before we decertified, the critical one was that for the last 20 years we have split uh, the revenue approximately 50-50 between uh, players and owners. Uh, uh, before we decertified, uh, the owners wanted a fundamental shift in that 50-50 uh, split. And they were unwilling to demonstrate uh, by showing us audited financial statements or any other uh, audited proof uh, that they were suffering. Uh, what jumps out at me, and I've always had this contention, that you have all of these owners, all of these sports owners, but these taxpayer-funded stadiums. And when I start hearing people say, oh, we're losing millions and millions of dollars, the first thing that's, that, that says to me is that, well, when you're losing millions of dollars in the business, well, what you typically do is you will cut expenses to try to sit here and balance it out. Or if need be, you sell your business. Do you buy the poor mouthing from the <laughs> owners that, oh, we're in a tough you know what financial the coming. You know what the answer is coming. Uh, no. A and to actually add a finer point to that, none of the owners, just to make it worse, uh, because your point is, is directly relevant, to make it worse, not one owner has said that we're losing money. The National Football League has never come to the players and said teams are, on, uh, are in financial extremis. The National Football League never came and said, wait a minute, we need to change something because football uh, is going to end because we are economically unable to uh, sustain our business model. Not one person from the National Football League has ever said that. I have to ask you this question as it relates to the health issue in the NFL. We've seen numerous uh, stories, real sports with Brian Gumbo. We've seen ESPN outside the lines. We've seen newspapers, magazines online talk about uh, the health crisis. That is players dying at an earlier age. Yeah. We see the whole issue of brain injuries. We look at Dave Dorson, uh, who committed suicide. They studied his brain. It showed the kind CTE. of trauma. Uh, and so from a player standpoint, when you hear we want two more games. Is that simply flat out a non-starter not going to happen? When you look at the health crisis affecting these players, because the average fan is going, hey, I want to see ball, but yeah. they don't see guys not being able to walk and play with their children when they're 40 years old. Well, and, and again, you've hit the nail on the head. I, I go to uh, probably about 30 to 40 alumni events, uh, former player events a year. Um, I, I see their wives who say that their, their husbands are slower, uh, that they have migraines. Uh, that they fear the early onset of dementia. Uh, I These are guys to, in their late 30s, early uh, 40s. The late 30s, early 40s. Um, so when it comes to the issue of the players' health and safety, um, about two years ago I said something that a number of owners for some reason thought was controversial. I said that the health and safety of our players is non-negotiable. It's non-negotiable. Um, our players play for approximately three years. Uh, we're still in a system where there is no guaranteed health care for our players for the injuries that they suffer playing football. That's the truth. Um, if something happens to a player and he's injured, he has to file for workers' comp, the same workers' comp system uh, that is in place when accidents occur in the normal right. workplace. Um, you have to play for three years before you get any post-career health care. And the average career is about 3.2 about years. years. So um, the issue of concussions, you know, we've been very aggressive about taking our facts up on Capitol Hill. Uh, I think that was a game changer in the way in which uh, the country perceived um, CTE and traumatic brain mm -hmm. injury. Uh, when I took this job, the head of the NFL's concussion committee was a rheumatologist. So look, um, we've done a lot together, I think, to mm -hmm. make the game safer. Are we there yet? No. Um, when we uh, negotiations broke down, um, 
the players had the position that we should be moving forward in the issues of health care, mm-hmm. moving forward in the issues of pension, uh, moving forward in making a safer game for one critical reason. Mm-hmm. We do not, I do not believe that there is, uh, that you have to make a choice between a game that's fun and a game that's safe. That's a false choice. Um, You can have a game that's fun and a game that is safe. You can have a game that takes care of the men who play this game. You can have a game uh, that ensures that if they suffer injuries, they'll be taken care of down the road. But if we continue to believe um, uh, that uh, in that false choice, uh, it's a disservice uh, to the players who played. It's a disservice to the men who play. and it doesn't serve the men who are going to play this game. Demar Smith, certainly good luck in the negotiations. Thank you. And like any football fan, I'm, I'm certainly hopeful we will see football this fall.